<laughs> Welcome to the Carnivore Family Channel, where we're a little suspicious that the plants are trying to kill us. Today, I'm going to share how our family of 10 transitioned from a standard American diet to a carnivore way of eating. In some ways, this has been an intentionally gradual adjustment, and in others, it was rapid. At the making of this video, we're about 10 months into our journey as a family and still adapting as we heal, learn, and grow. We want this to be a permanent change for us, so we have been determined to make this a positive and rewarding experience for everyone without compromising on our goals. To kick this off, I'd be ever so grateful if you could hit the subscribe button and ring that bell. Check out the Carnivore family on social media and our store, links in the description box below. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Rebecca Reese. My husband and I have eight kids and they are 15, 13, 11, 11, eight, six, four, and two years old. Whew. We have been a carnivore family for 10 months now and my husband and I have collectively lost 125 pounds. Although weight loss has been a big motivator for changing our way of eating, my husband's health was the ultimate reason we decided to take the plunge. This wasn't just a scheme to drop some pounds. We wanted to get healthy, truly healthy as a family. The standard American diet just wasn't good for any of us. Even if our kids weren't showing any overt health problems yet, doesn't mean that they weren't experiencing negatives from a diet loaded with carbs, sugar, and processed imitation foods. Spoiler alert, the kids were showing side effects from the bad diet. We just didn't notice many of them because they were too mundane. Stomach aches, migraines, moodiness, congestion, erratic energy levels, cravings, unnecessary weight gain, just to name a few. None of us realized how bad we felt because we didn't know how good we could feel. Today I'm going to outline what our adjustment process has been for our family. I do this hoping to inspire other families who are considering the benefits of the carnivore way of eating. When we started, my husband and I went full carnivore right from the beginning. We spent a lot of time learning from people like Dr. Ken Berry, Dr. Anthony Chafee, Bella the Steak and Butter Gal, Bart Kay, and Kelly Hogan. We initially ate a lot of processed meats, cheeses, diet soda, and coffee. But as we got the hang of it and learned more, we started refining our menu a little at a time. Our taste buds naturally started to discourage us from picking the processed meats when whole meats were available. We realized that dairy slowed our progress and we would never kick our cravings for sugar while drinking diet soda. My husband gave up coffee completely and I switched to minimal amounts of decaf for a while and then finally kicked the habit myself. I now start my day with a carnivore latte, which is just butter, egg yolks, and heavy whipping cream. It's satiating and satisfies my habit of wanting a hot comfort drink. Early on in a pinch, we'd use condiments and cheeses to help keep us going, but we kept pushing ourselves to do better and better. My husband's health improved so dramatically that we couldn't help but be driven to keep improving. I have felt such freedom in being able to eat to satisfaction, not obsess about food, not count calories, and while also feeling the best I have felt most of my adult life. With the kids, we took it in stages. We started by cutting all the major grains and sugar products from the grocery list. Cereal, bread, pasta, chips, cookies, candy, all gone right away. And we started figuring out what the staple meals would be for the family. We bought hot dogs, frozen hamburger patties, chorizo, bratwurst, lunch meat, cheeses, chicken wings, and eggs. Lots of eggs. Lots of eggs. We especially looked for foods that they could easily prepare themselves in the air fryer or could just eat cold. One of the keys for us was not trying to make everyone eat the exact same thing at every meal. I would batch cook things like ground beef, steak bites, and drumsticks, and pork chops so that there were plenty of options but leftovers just went in the fridge for eating on demand. As long as food wasn't getting wasted, they could eat freely of any meat item that they wanted. Initially, they went through a lot of food and our grocery bill was crazy there for a minute, but as their bodies began to adapt, so did their appetites. Meat is so much more satisfying than any other food. During those first couple of months, we did continue to buy some fruits and vegetables that they were used to, like apples, bananas, and oranges, and tomatoes and carrots and bell peppers. 
We set daily limits so they did not fill up on these items. Over time, we simply bought them less and less. We'd run out and I wouldn't rush to replenish them. And over time, we just stopped buying them completely. This naturally helped to work these out of our routine. In the beginning, we also allowed them to use condiments like ketchup, ranch, and barbecue sauce for dipping their meats, as well as raw honey and sometimes granola for the yogurt. But like the fruits and vegetables, we just started slowing the availability. It would complain for like a minute and then eventually find some other way to flavor the food, like adding butter or they would just eat it plain. It took about five months to completely eliminate the condiments and add-ins from our system. This coincided with the beginning of the holiday season. Check out my video here on how we tackled the holidays. And I am convinced that this final purge of all the sugar-laden condiments helped make the holidays manageable by killing the sugar cravings forever. We also started reducing the processed meats mainly because we wanted to base most of our diet on whole meats rather than products that do still contain small amounts of sugars, carbs, and preservatives. Some of the kids were noticeably bothered by the processed meats as well. We started using them just for packed meals and the occasional holiday. We started setting limits on cheeses after a while just because it became easy for the kids to use it as a filler food. But we used common sense metrics like one slice of cheese per hamburger patty or just a layer of shredded cheese on scrambled eggs. Interestingly enough, the kids suddenly slowed their cheese consumption dramatically all on their own about two months ago. I had been buying less and less and nobody asked for it like they used to. Now, I don't want you to think this was all about just giving them less and less. We also started building in other good habits in tandem with the other changes. We taught them to cook their favorite dishes. Kids really like to learn new skills and it makes them feel independent and invested in the process. The air fryer is super easy to manage, but they're also getting really good at making scrambled egg dishes, fish, and steak on the stove. We keep hard boiled eggs on hand and they routinely make deviled eggs just to snack on. We also started trying new things like brown butter bites and making our own jerky. Even though there are foods that they still miss, at times, they really like the freedom that they have to eat a pile of bacon for lunch or snack on a spoonful of butter or fry up a whole tray of hamburger patties and chicken wings just for themselves. As long as they aren't wasteful, they can make and eat food until they are satisfied. Because unlike sugars and carbs, they just don't overeat meat. They are very in tune with their hunger cues now. We are still adapting as we go, but when I look back at how far we have come in such a short time, I'm really proud of my family. This hasn't always been easy, but it has been completely worth it. Now, if you're wondering how to get your family started, I'm giving away my free carnivore family grocery guide that you can use to help get your family on the road to carnivore success. Check out the description box for details. And now it's your turn. Tell me about your carnivore family journey or why you're thinking about starting the journey with your family. Slap that like button to give this episode a virtual high five and send me a note via carnivorefam at gmail.com. Take care and let your steaks be juicy and your bacon be crunchy. Air foyer, Dr. Bill.